as you recall, we announced it in Israel, in Jerusalem, actually, uh, as the first city in the first country that um, uh, that was the sort of the deep first announcement on January 21st, 2008. That was about, um, about less than 20 months ago. We said at the time that our goal is to actually have a countrywide test by the end of 2010, and we're on that mark. We're actually um, installing, we've already installed across the country in most cities, uh, chart spots actually in Jerusalem, there's a whole street. There's an announcement today with Jerusalem on a, on a strategic partnership with the city to become the, f the biggest adoption, uh, both for cars and for installation of the infrastructure uh, across Jerusalem, which the mayor is actually uh, spearheaded personally, and I think we're, Deserves a, a lot of credit for that. Um, we will we will run uh, the test um, in the second half of 2010, about 12 months from now. The test will start. We we estimate roughly between six and 12 months worth of testing if everything works well. Um, around the end of 2011, we will open to the general public. We already have. Uh, more than 50 companies in Israel that have signed to convert their fleets. They'll be the first ones to, uh, to go over all the fleets in Israel uh, that have signed for conversion, obviously take a longer period of time, uh, account for about 35,000 cars. So um, it's, a, it's a fairly significant move. Um, as far as the progress of the product itself, we, uh, we showed the car a month ago in Frankfurt. Uh, it's a beautiful car. It's actually a significant sedan. It's a four, 85 meter, it's not the doc doc that uh, uh, Jaime has, has actually shared with us, but it's a car that would be sort of at the level of an Audi A6, uh, as far as the look and feel, the speed is actually a bit faster than that, it's a, it's a very high acceleration car, uh, it's highly equipped, uh, it drives very nicely and it will be able to go on a single battery from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and back. Um, so that's, uh, that's the autonomy that we're aiming for, the, and back. Uh, we'll have 70 switch stations. Um, we'll have so that nobody ever goes to Tel Aviv and, and comes back. You know, it's, 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 um, the, uh, it's, it's a uh, it'll be about 70 70 stations um, around Israel at, at launch in 2011. That would give coverage for every road on the country um, of 160 kilometers. You'll always have four stations. Um, and on any 160 kilometer drive you take throughout the country. So there'll be an overabundance if you want to switch stations. We're now showing the, f the first subsystem. So in Japan, in the beginning of the year, there'll be a, uh, the first uh, uh, taxi station that would run four taxis, 100 days, seven by 24, um, to demonstrate that you can actually go 300 plus kilometers a day uh, in a normal drive with passengers inside and get the data for that. In COP15 in Denmark, we have our first operative a massive electric network for charging, so we're testing two subsystems. In COP15, all the electric cars will go, will go through that. I want to give some of the answers to the questions that were raised here. First of all, on the sh uh, shortage of electricity, actually we have a study by the Electric Utility of Israel, the Israel Electric Company, uh, that using our smart charging software that's in the cars in the uh, back office system, uh, there's no need for any additional uh, generation, nor is there any need for any change to the uh, uh, charging network. In effect, we've saved $5 billion worth of infrastructure investment for Israel by using our software. With regards to safety, I want to remind you that um, the car you'd be driving today home actually has the highest energy density explosive liquid in the back of the car. And just for fun, you have a lighter in the front. Um, so, when you think of safety, um, next time you think of what you're driving, you actually have a bomb that is the, sort of the main driver of the car. Uh, the batteries that we have are so safe, you can actually throw them into a fire and they will not catch on fire. I mean, that's that safe. So, you're actually going away from a, a crazy idea of putting a, putting a high, liquid, high energy liquid in the car and driving on it to a safe model. Uh, as far as insurance goes, um, we now have uh, the insurance companies, the major insurance companies in Europe, including the one in Denmark, has just announced that they will provide insurance to the electric cars in Denmark at a reduced rate, at a discounted rate of 40%, due to the fact you can't steal that car. Um, you, it's kind of a stupid car if you steal it because we know where you are. So you can actually send the police to pick you up where you're going to go. Um, we can also lock your doors on the way out there. So um, it's, it's a fairly safe, fairly innocuous. Uh, as far as standards, we're, uh, the, the big standards committees are actually convening in Tel Aviv this week 
and uh, the 70 countries, the standards are emerging, and we've committed to be both standard-based, international standard-based, as well as uh, fully open, so that if there is a second network, they can use our network uh, openly, and so that there's no antitrust situation in, uh, in building the network. Thank, Thank you. you very much.